This is Suki the Brown Eyed Stitcher, and I am filming like much earlier in the day than I ever do because I have time now and I just thought I'd get it done before I really was too tired. I'm already tired and it's like just after 9 a.m. in the morning. So, let's just get started. I have a puppy right here. <laughs> uh, so we'll see what she does. My daughter is still asleep. So she'll wake up probably while I'm filming this video. I hope she'll wake up while I'm filming this video. Anyway, okay. So it's been two weeks uh, since my last video. And 24 hours of cross stitch happened this last weekend. Many of you joined me when I live streamed that. Um, I hadn't fully decided if I was going to live stream until I was like 45 minutes into 24 hours of cross stitch. And then I decided I'm just going to do it. I don't have to be committed to being live like the whole time and then I decided just to be live the whole time. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, like so many of you came and watched and chatted and even those of you who didn't chat, like I'm just so happy that that was a place that like was good for you for the weekend. Um, like, that was good. So I got to talk to so many of you and got get to know everyone better and I'm sure that y'all got to know me maybe too much. Okay, so if you ever just need a whole bunch of stitch with me's with like lots of random things, I think there's eight parts that you can um, watch. And if you go through the whole thing, you will be very close to 24 hours. <laughs> Of, of stitching time so there's that okay so um I've worked on one two three four projects and some crochet lots of crochet um, but only one project and then I've got like a stack that feels like it's a big stack of haul but it doesn't mean that there's a lot of things in it. We'll get to that. Focus. Okay, so it's almost Halloween. So in honor of it almost being Halloween and I have my bats up here. I also have my ghost shirt. He glows in the dark. He's cute. Um, I just got it this year. That's all I have to say about that. Happy Halloween, y'all. <laughs> um... Yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay, so I'm going to show you Bubble Bubble Chocolate Trouble first. Um, this is artwork by Randall Spangler, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Design. And... Yeah, it's cute. So my daughter wants me to work all the sky first, and literally she doesn't want me to st stitch the moon or the building. But I can do these trees. So it's like trees and the sky. And then I think she wants me to do the building before the moon. But at some point she said it the other way around. So we'll see what she feels like in like a really long time when I finish the rest of the sky. Then I will come and I think she wants me to do all of this for next. And then I can't remember if she decided the cauldron or the dragons. I don't know, but that's that's how we're approaching this one right now. Lots of sky. So my goal for this, its rotation, was to reach 5%. This is on um, 25 count, easy count fabric. It is 2 over 1, 10 stitch. 
and here is 5%. Halfway through the top of the pattern is here. You can see the nice lovely curve of the moon happening there. So I worked, uh, I don't know where I was at last video, but I know I filled in a lot of up here to make the round of the moon and then worked down in here. There's another branch that is coming in here and comes down this way. I don't have too many of those colors, but I can kind of see how it, how it's happening with the sky color. So lots of blue, lots of, um, lots of, lots of blue. Like up here, there was only like two or three colors of blue down here. I, there's a lot more colors of blue happening. Um, but it's always good to see the shading come in and the detail. And I love it. Oh, I put in 3,586 stitches in the last two weeks. So it's at 5%. I did a lot of that before 24 hours of cross stitch. And then um, during 24 hours of cross stitch, I did like the final like 200 stitches. <laughs> It was like 241 stitches or something like that to get to 5%. But I stopped because that's all I needed. That's all I wanted. Okay. There's that. I'm like super relaxed. Like up here I'm put together, but that's only because I didn't look want to look insanely tired. I feel really tired. Um, like for a while I had gotten my sleep to be closer to eight hours and now it's back to like just under seven hours and it's challenging. Um, I need more sleep than seven hours. So, um, and I've got like super cozy pants on down here. Whee! Because we all needed to see that. Um. I just heard my daughter awake, so there's something I need to go steal from her. I mean, borrow from her for this video. I will be right back. Okay. So, um, in 24 hours of cross stitch, what I did was I started with Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, until I reached, so what I ended up doing was I took my daily goal, which is like 600-ish, um, and I took the three days of cro uh, 24 hours of cross stitch, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, so I did 600 multiplied by three and then divided by two. Because I was live streaming and I was going to have to move the camera to like where I stitch my bookshelf versus where I was, I stitch everything else. Um, I didn't want to do that like every single day. So I started off on my bookshelf and I went to halfway through the three days worth of stitches. So a day and a half. I can make sense. Um, so that was like 900 stitches. So I went somewhere around 900 stitches on that first morning of 24 hours of cross stitch. And then I went to Bubble Bubble, Chocolate Trouble, and I hit my 5%. The next one that I wanted to work on was Under the Sea. This was a 2017 stitch along by the Lakeside Needlecraft. It's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I just realized that, like, you see how it's darker? Like, the fabric's darker on this side and lighter on this side. I oriented mine to where it's lighter up here and darker down here because, like, that's the ocean floor. Anyway, not that it matters. Um, so I, this is my oldest non-full coverage 
project. Started January 1st, 2017. And it's I am very ready for this piece to be done, and even more so after 24 hours of cross-stitch. Um, it was released in 12 parts, and I was doing part 11, right there. I hadn't started it prior to 24 hours of cross-stitch. But look, it's not back-stitched. That is going to happen this week. I was asked um, for a backstitching tutorial. We'll see, um, how that turns out. <laughs> anyway, um, but all of this action, like the stitching of it, that happened over 24 hours of cross stitch. It took me probably 12 hours of stitching. Um, so for those of you who watched 24 hours of cross stitch you can skip ahead if you don't want to hear me complain about it again for those of you who didn't watch it at all <laughs> this was so frustrating um I think I say every time I show this piece that uh, it's so fiddly to stitch and I don't like really enjoy stitching it but it's really cute when it's done and so if you watched the live streams or the replays, whatever, you heard me complain for just about 12 hours about this piece. So it's charted for full crosses, but with backstitching, okay? So the backstitching is often along the outside. But it also can run along shading, like between two different colors, right? That's what backstitching often happens, um, or where it's off, where it's placed. So when I started this piece, 2017 me stitched it in full cross, but within two parts, I quickly realized I didn't like it when there was full crosses sitting on the outside of the backstitch or where the back stitch was supposed to be dividing like a light and a dark color I, I, and the different shadings. Like I didn't like it when the full crosses weren't doing that. So um, starting with the third part, I started converting it to fractionals. So I've been doing fractionals the whole rest of the time and it looks so much better, but it is so annoying to stitch. And I kept making mistake after mistake after mistake. This whole part. Let's find my happy place. Okay. Um, this fish is stitched completely correctly, but I did have to frog a color that I stitched wrong. Like I, yeah. It was a color that was within the fish, but then I stitched the wrong symbol. And then, so I stitched it in the fish, and then I came down here and stitched the rest of that thread out, and then realized it was the completely wrong color, so I had to frog all of that and then get it right. Um, this lobster, I, because of the fractionals, there was a counting mistake, and um, this claw is in the right spot, all the rest of this is like shifted <laughs> just by one square down and over, but still. Um, this is all correct. This is all correct. This dude, the squid, um, he had to get fudged. Again, accounting error, so... Like, his tentacles over here are a little bit long, and his head right here is a little bit squished. Uh, the snail got fudged a little bit. You can't even really see the snail. There's his little eyes. It'll look better once it's backstitched, but he's been a little fudged. Um, this dude, the, the oyster, he's correct, but I had to fudge the sand around it in order to make that happen. Oh my gosh, I've not had to do that on any other piece. So I think it was a combination of being live and and the fractionals. Like it's already difficult 
to go from like reading full cross and switching it to fractionals, but then I had the challenge of live streaming and um, yeah, I'm gonna be very happy when this is done. So my plan is to this week backstitch this. This took me like three hours of backstitching, so I imagine this will take some time, especially because there is fudging, and so I have to make sure that the backstitching matches what I did, not what the pattern says. And then I probably will take at least a two-week break on this, and it won't be until after my next video that I will do part 12 which is the final part, and that'll be so exciting to have done. I think it'll be easier, though, because there is like a, oh, I looked it up. There's a crab, I think, up here, and a couple fish, but they're like these kind of fish, not like these little fiddly clownfish. And then there's the giant clamshell here, and the middle of it is like one color, so that'll be nice. Anyway, uh... So that was 12 hours of cross, um, 24 hours of cross stitch right there. Um, all in all though, like I'm pretty happy about, like I'm not super frustrated about it anymore. I just find it more that it was very annoying to me. <laughs> it's annoying to me to stitch on it but once I start stitching on it, like, I want it done so much that I don't want to stop. And I was very happy to have all the company that I had while I was stitching on this. It kept me going until the end of the stitching part, not the back stitching part. So, anyway. Um, so, after Under the Sea, it was... It was late. It was like 9 or 9.30 or something like that. I don't know. It was getting late. My mind and body had definitely been wanting me to like be getting ready for bed and I wasn't because I needed to get to like 11 o'clock before I could. Anyway, um, my Sundays are really busy now, so I knew the most that I would be able to stitch on Sunday. And I had a few things on Friday, so I knew that what pretty much what time I had on, on Friday. Plus, by the time I got to Saturday, I knew exactly how much I had stitched on Friday. And my Sunday time was still like, I would only get five hours, pretty much. So, um... Like, I knew what I needed on Saturday, which meant I knew I couldn't go to sleep until a certain time if I was going to hit 24 hours over the weekend. Uh, so, to bridge the gap between finishing under the sea, meeting that goal, and then getting to bed, uh, I, I was kind of toying around with two choices. Do I move on to Queen of the Night, which is the next full coverage piece that I'm rotating in? Or do I start a, a meal hook kit because it just sounded nice to me to, to like start something new after slogging through under the sea. Ultimately though, there were several of you with a, the best idea of you should probably do your full coverage because I didn't have the meal hook kit uh, prepped so I was going to have to like sort it and everything. And... They had just watched me go through Under the Sea and heard me complaining about it the whole time. So they told me I should I should pick Queen of the Night because it was going to be easier on my brain. Which is 100% true because that's full coverage for me. It's so much easier for me to stitch full coverage on a live than like anything else, but I'm willing to stitch anything live. We're good with that. Um, except maybe under the sea, that will never be live ever again. Okay, Queen of the Night. 
This is artwork by Josephine Wall and it is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. It's a, it's a little one. It's 150 something thousand stitches. And I stitch 939 all of this stuff. Um, probably this too. So all of here, I stitched that. Um, not very exciting to look at, but because I didn't fill anything in, I just I just needed easy brain stuff, so I did that. There's a bunch more nine three nine down here, so that might be what I work on next is more nine three nine. Or I might come up here and start filling some of this in. I've got options and I'm okay either way. Oh, I put in, um, that is on the same as Bubble Bubble. It's 25 count to over one tenth stitch. Um, I put in 471 stitches. And it's at 25.82%. The goal for this rotation I say goal, but it's really like I'm not rotating out of this one until I hit that goal. But I would ideally like to see me hit 30% by the end of November, so that December I am stitching on um, my Christmas full coverage. So I guess that is a goal, is I want, I want the 30% by the end of November, which is only like six and a half thousand, maybe 6,500 stitches. Um, I say only, but I'm also going to be gone for a week. So we'll see if I don't get to Father Christmas until like later in December. That's what it is, but we'll see. We will see. <sighs> Um, so on my, on 24 hours of cross stitch, uh, who was it, Jess? Stitches, I wrote it down to make sure I got stitches. I put on sass, is that really what, isn't it of? Stitches. On sass. But now, in my head it's of. Of sass? I'm putting it on the screen. I should not be filming today. Okay, um, Jess, <laughs> is her name, I know her name is Jess, Jessica, Jess, okay, um, she gave me the tip about how to attach a paper pattern to a Lowry stand, and I really like it, so I wanted to tell you guys this one, um, here's a Lowry, it's really tall. Oh, I just hit myself in the head. Good job, CP. Okay, so this is the clamp part that you put in your whatever it is that you're putting in your project. And she used like needle minders and magnets. Um, and obviously I did too, but what I used was, oh my gosh, I can't get it apart. One of these like jobby thingies. I think we've all seen them around. But it was perfect because you put your paper here and then you attach it like that. Um, look, I can actually show you with a paper what that looks like. Not a pattern, but a paper. Like that. And then your project is sitting here, out here. And it was perfect and I loved it and thank you Jess. I need this paper, so you need to come off of here. Okay, this is the last project for me to show you. That is stitching. This is um, Treasure Hunt Bookshelf Super Size Max Color. It's beautiful. And I'm trying not to look at the pattern very closely because I actually don't know what's at the bottom of this pattern, like the section I'm working on, and I, I want to be surprised. So, um, this is 28 count, 
2 over 1 10 stitch. And that's kind of like my favorite jam is 28 count, 2 over 1 tent. Um, I'm looking at the wrong side of my note card. I have put in 9,116 stitches in the last two weeks. So we are at 51.87%. I have until like Tuesday, November 1st, I must be done with this shelf. Like that is a hard must be done. So but Halloween might be spent just stitching on this. We'll see. Um, I'm nervous about how much I see left and not knowing the exact stitch count that I need to make sure I can do that every day. So I'm still getting a minimum of, of 600 stitches a day. Um, but I keep looking at this like, is that gonna get me? Is that gonna get me to, to the goal that I need? So in two weeks, when you see this on my one year floss to reversary video, um, I'm going to unroll this and you're gonna see shelves one and two finished in all its glory and it's gonna be beautiful and there's gonna be tears and we're gonna huzzah with tissue. I don't know what we're going to do. It's gonna be something. Um, there you go. I have no idea where this was at in two weeks ago because I forgot to look. But this is where it's at now. Um, let's see. So you can see the diagonal. Everything above right here is finished. Uh, I was stitching and I saw all of these light colors and I was like, what? What is that? They didn't. It looks. You know how when you're stitching on something it looks really flat because it is uh, but it wasn't until I was taking the picture and editing it for Instagram that all of a sudden I could see like oh <laughs> it's book titles obviously obviously they're book titles but it didn't look like that when I was stitching I was just like it's just like random light colors I couldn't I could not see it but you can see it very nicely So good. Take a look. Take a look. Because in two weeks, it's gonna be done. Yay. Um, well, this shelf, not the whole thing. This shelf is gonna be done. And that shelf kind of marks the true halfway point for me, even though 50% already happened. Um, the end of the shelf is what feels like the real halfway, because that means two out of the four shelves are done. So, um, November 1st, I need to have that shelf finished. November 2nd, I, um, will be gone for, uh, like Wednesday to Wednesday. I'll be gone for a full week. Uh, I will be going to a stitching retreat and then I will be driving even further away for a, um, K-pop concert that my daughter and I are going to. So... I'm going to be exhausted. I already know that. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to the retreat. I'm really looking forward to the concert. I'm not sure that I'm looking forward to how much driving that all means in between all the things. But I've tried to build in, like I'm going up on a Wednesday, but the retreat's not until Friday. So I have a day to like recover from the driving before I go into the retreat. And then I'm building kind of like little pockets in here and there after that point. We'll see. I'm basically going, the retreat ends like midday Sunday. And after that, I'm driving that afternoon from Ohio to Illinois, which is like six hours of driving. The concert's Monday evening. So I have 
all of all day Monday in which to do like relaxing, chill, like maybe take a walk outside. Um, maybe find a disc golf course. My daughter will hate that, but she doesn't have to throw. Um, and then Tuesday, I'm going to drive back to Ohio in the morning and then have the afternoon to have like downtime and sleep there that night before driving all the rest of the way back here to Virginia. So anyway, it's a lot of driving and you probably didn't need to know all of that detail, but by the time I make another video, I will have stitching things to show, but I will, it will also be a lot of like traveling and even though I'll make sure to stitch something every day, um, because I have so far this year, I have not missed a day. Sometimes it's not very much stitching, but it, it's been something every single day this year so far, and I'm not interested in breaking that streak. So I will make sure to be stitching on something every single day, even with all the traveling, and that's okay. So um, I'll show you this one last time. <laughs> Since I've just been like talking for forever. Okay, my floss tube anniversary is in, will be my next video, and that means it's going to be a whip parade, and I'm very excited because there are some of these projects that I have not seen since May, when I stitched all of them in Mania, and in May was my six-month whip parade, so... It's not like I'm showing, like, here's all of this progress, but it'll be fun to, like, pull it out and see. Um, some of them I definitely wouldn't have touched because they would have been in the first part of May. Not the second, like, and I haven't touched them since then. Anyway, and it's going to make me want to stitch on all the things, and, and I'm, I can't. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you crochet real quick. I mentioned on my live that my daughter made a chunky knit chunky yeah knit blanket I mean she didn't use needles or anything because you don't really with chunky yarn but she really wanted to do it and um she's not been cross stitching for decades at this point it feels like decades it's been months um but she has still done some other crafty things in this. So she chose three colors. It's like a, this is a pinkish, not, it's not pink, it's peachy. It's a very light peach color, which is getting washed out in the light. That blue, and this is like a cream color. Here's the cream and the pink next to each other. So you can see that there's a little difference, but you can't really... You can't really see the difference. Anyway, so she did that. <laughs> I can't, I can't show this to you. She's very happy with this. She loves it. And, um, yeah. Ta-da, that's what she did. Um, and I've been crocheting a blanket for my niece. And I'm going to see her on my trip, so I've been trying to get this done. And I know how much I've done since the last video because um, I took care of all of my threads after my last video, but I haven't. But So this was at where I was at my last video, and this is everything since then. Which is... A lot um, it doesn't it just it looks like it looks like the last video but um, longer that's all <laughs> um, you can see the pattern what's interesting to me is that in my head this is the dividing and this is the middle of the repeat but when I'm looking at it here that looks like the middle and that looks like the divider but the bottom row, I started with, I started with that, 
So this is my repeat, is here. But when I look at it right here, that's not how my eye is looking at it. So that's interesting. Um, not that it matters in the least. So I realized this blanket is super long, like wide. Much wider than I intended it to be. I was kind of intending it to be like this wide. But I didn't pay attention and it's like um, almost twice. Almost twice <laughs> as wide. I didn't pay attention when I cast on, obviously. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. I think what I'm going to do is my next row is a variegation. And then I'm going to do one more repeat. And then I think I'm going to do the border. I think that it will be the height that I need um, or want. So it's getting, it's getting close. And... And I crochet that, like, during my daughter's dance classes. I crochet it when I'm watching a movie, when I'm, when I just have a few minutes here and there, when I'm in meetings, or um, even when I'm reading aloud. It's a blanket pattern that is very repetitive, so I can do that while reading aloud. So, anyway, okay, I'm probably... Do I have anything else? Okay. Uh, so during my 24 hours of cross stitch, I was asked for a um, back stitching video and also how to um, set up and work with an app Stitch Pal. I, uh, those of you who watched the live stream, you got to see like how I take my photos and then um, like the process I do after every picture I take. I use Stitch Pal with my full coverage and I edit my photo and then I and I post it. So there are some things in there um, that if you watch those live streams you got to see. Uh, and I'm just gonna leave it like that. But I was asked specifically like how to use Stitch Pal. So um, it's not, it's not very complicated. I just will need to film it for you, um, quickly. Maybe, I don't know. The back stitching I think is a higher priority, but I hope, we'll see. We'll see if I get to the Stitch Pal one as well. If there's anything else that I haven't ever covered in like a, tutorial kind of video like if there's anything informational like that that you want to see I I can do it the one that I've been resisting is is the <laughs> is how I work through a heaven and earth design pattern specifically um tent like a basket weave tent stitch and how I deal with that with a lot of colors and confetti um I know the best way to do it I just know how much work that's going to be in the editing process and so I've been I've been putting it off I I admit that okay I have some things to show you um I got a one two three stitch order um because I got a notification that Grecian gold why am I showing that to you in the plastic? Grecian Gold was on sale and it's not been available like all year long. So, um, I didn't know how many I needed, so I grabbed two. I think I might have only needed one for, uh, which one is it that uses it? The Swans, the Year in the Woods, the Swans uses Grecian Gold. Um, but because I hadn't seen it for so long I, and I was not at home, I was actually sitting at the car shop, I, and I didn't want to wait. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to order two. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So Grecian Gold, this is um, the Gentle Art Sampler Threads. It does have some variegation that you can't, it's not like super showing up, but it does have it. 
it's probably because my lighting outside isn't that great, so it's all pretty artificial lighting tonight. So, because I can't get little threads on their own, I got um the fall year in the woods. This is the woodpecker. This is the beaver. And this is the bat. I shelled that out of order. That's okay. It doesn't matter. This is the bat. The little brown bat. I love him so much. So, um, 9, 10, 11. So I'm, I'm planning on stitching these, this whole series. Each season gets its own fabric, but the three in the season are going to be stitched together. So these ones will go in that order, 9, 10, and the beaver's 11. It's going to look so good. I'm excited. Um, yeah. And then I also grabbed um, the two Mill Hill Santas. I have the first, um, or I have one of the Southern Cross. I have the Southern Cross, but I got the Northern Light Santa. And all of these right here, that's all beads. It looks so, so cool. I can't wait. And this is Eastern Star Santa. And these three were the first three, like, head-to-toe Santas, um, themed Santas that Mill Hill released. They do have a one, two, three. You can see, like, the numbers here. That one says four. They do have a one, two, three, but it wasn't like their full Santa. It was kind of separate. And then starting with this year, they they were doing like the themed one. So, uh, so I got all of those. That those were all from the first year that they did it. Those two and the one that I already have. Um, I was just given this last night. It's an embroidery kit, actually. It's called Winter Flower. I haven't even opened this. Um, the owner of the dance studio that my daughter and I dance at, she got this in like a fab fit fun box. I don't know if I said that right, and it doesn't matter, but she doesn't have time. Like, she owns a business and her husband owns a business and they have two kids that are very busy and yeah. Anyway, so she was like, I know somebody who cross stitches. Like, that's not the same thing as embroidery, but maybe she'll do it. Um, and so that's what I'm, I'm going to open this. Um, so I got this last night from her. It looks, well, it looks like that. There's a little bit cut off down here, but it's mostly just finishing out that flower and the stem. So I'm really, really excited for this actually. And I will, I will totally do this project. Um, it, it's got your like stamped fabric and your threads and a hoop. It's got all the things in it. It's good. Okay. And then I got some items for the retreat. Um, I got this um, Ot Light flexible, flexible Soft Touch LED Desk Lamp. I just picked it up yesterday. Um, but I don't, I haven't, I haven't opened it yet, so, but I wanted a life for the retreat, and so I got one, and I got one that would sit on the table instead of clamping to, like, a frame or anything, and I think that's just my preference, but I don't really know because I've never been to a retreat to find out. 
Um, I'm opening another box because I haven't managed to open this yet. That's my box. <laughs> it's been sitting on my stairs for like three weeks now. But it's for the retreat, so I was not worried about opening it at all. But I got a power, what do they call this? A portable power station. Got a thing. Um, so hopefully it works like I want it to. I don't know. I've never used one of these before. Um, I've never used like a power bank or anything like that, period. I like... I've always used cords that you plug into the wall. <laughs> or I suppose I use card chargers too. But I've never used like anything like this or one of those like cell phone things, like external battery packs with cell phone. Yeah, I've never used anything like that. So, oh, look, it's got a handle. That's cute. Anyway, so I think... I think that that means I'm all set for the retreat. I just have to decide what projects I'm taking. Um, oh, I, hold on. Okay, so during the live, it was basically decided that I would start, what is this called? Spirit of the Phoenix by Charting Creations. Um, this is a Dakota Detweiler piece that I love. Um, so it was basically decided that to commemorate Alara and I first, our first like meeting in person, because we haven't yet. Um, since we've been talking about each other for the last year, it might be surprising that we haven't met ever, but we haven't. Um, so I don't know what I'm saying about that. Oh, um, so it was decided that in in commemoration of that, we're going to start this chart together at the retreat, which means um, I need fabric. And I have, I have some 28 count here that I'm hoping will fit, but this might be a weird, it might not be long, like wide enough tall enough because this is kind of squarish but I do have another piece of I think I have I think I have a really big cut of 28 count and I have 25 count so I'm just gonna have to look at which one I want to do if I do 25 count I don't know that I want to do 25 count because I don't love tent stitch on it and I don't I think I want to do one over one full cross on that one. I don't know that that would be quite enough coverage with how dark, with how dark that is. So I'm likely to do 28 count, possibly tent stitch, probably tent stitch, but I will also consider one over one full cross because canopy heart, which is also Dakota Detweiler, and also started with Alara. Um, that is one over one full cross. We'll see. <sighs> Ten stitch, though, is kind of my thing. So I really, really like it. So that's kind of my preference. That's my, obviously, my preference. Okay, that is everything. That is everything. So, I don't know if I was forgetting about anything that's happened outside of 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, it's fall, so all the leaves are changing colors. There's a tree right outside my window. It is a crepe myrtle, for any of you who know what crepe myrtles are. Um, it's a late summer blooming tree so it blooms at like August September time frame um, we have so many flowering trees here in Virginia and I really love it like it starts in March with the 
dogwoods and the cherry trees, but there's basically an, a kind of blooming tree starting from March all the way into September. It is gorgeous. But right now it has beautiful fall colors. Uh, so I'm really enjoying that. Um, but soon it'll lose its leaves and then I'm just going to feel cold. Maybe that's one reason why I get so cold in the winter is that I see all the naked trees and I feel cold on their behalf. That could be the case. Um, I don't know what else to say. My hair, I have another hair appointment like tomorrow. Look, this is my natural color and then I have not gone to get my hair done since end of April. So it's been a very, very long time. Um, and people think that I get this, this is um, done on purpose, but it's really not like, this is just how my hair fades out. Um, and you can see like it looks more purpley over here and over here it looks more blue. It's starting to go green in places, like a teal kind of a green. And look, some of that is like light. There's just so many different colors going on in my hair right now. And I don't, I don't mind that, but I'm ready for it to just like all be purple again. So oh, that's going to happen. And that's all I've got for you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And for everybody who hung out, hung out with me over 24 hours of cross stitch, it really was a blast. I had a lot of fun. So, um, thank you. Thank you for all your support, your encouragement, and your love. I'm sending my love to you, and I will see you later. Bye.